by Congressman Frank Lucas, the chairman of the House Agriculture Committee. Mr. Chairman, thank you for the time. Appreciate oh, it's it. good to be with you. Range of issues confronting the committee right yes. now. Let me start with one that you're even going to tackle today, and that's the issue of the oversight of derivatives, the new rulemakings coming mm -hmm. from the Commodity Futures Trading Commission, which your committee, of course, oversees all of this part of the Dodd-Frank legislation. You have concerns about how this process is moving right now. Tell me what those concerns are. I think they're moving too fast. Uh, certainly, Chairman Gensler and the CFTC are trying to follow the letter of the law. I'm not so sure necessarily the spirit of the law. A committee that uh, commission that usually issues five rules a year now has passed 40 rules this year since the passing of Dodd-Frank. They have numerous more to go. Uh, many of us on the committee, myself included, believe that this is too important. This is a multi-trillion dollar part of the American economy. They need to slow the process down, think more methodically about what they're doing, pass the rules in a way that uh, the people are going to be impacted can understand and comment back to them. Haste uh, makes waste as the old line goes, and I'm afraid uh, we may be on the verge of making some waste here. And of course, the, the concern here on your part and the part of a lot of folks in the agricultural community is the end users, how they might be affected by these rules. There's a lot of concerns on Wall Street about the banks, the swaps dealers uh, in the middle as well. Uh, let me get your sense right now. Are you satisfied that a lot of these rules aren't permanent, aren't, aren't final yet? Exactly. Are you seeing unintended consequences already? Though? Well, I think there's some definitions in the swap related issues that should have been done early on in the process before rules that would have would implement that are passed. I think there are circumstances where whether intentional or not, uh, some of the authorities, there's great concern about the margin requirements and the capital requirements that end users will have to face. We don't want to create a situation where we drive end users back to the biggest financial institutions, limit their alternatives, limit their ability to use these tools. My farmers, my energy people in Oklahoma use these products not to gamble, but they use them to hedge to provide some consistency to their business. Let's don't create a situation where ag or energy cannot use these products in the way they were intended. The American consumer ultimately will pay the price if they do. Let me ask you about the budget issues, the, the, mm -hmm. the money factor, and we've had the issue of farm subsidies come up mm -hmm. already as one of the areas out there potentially on the chopping block, both from Republicans and Democrats. The Deficit Commission talked about it as well. Do you see that coming? How much of a fight is coming for uh, uh, for your committee? Everything's on the table. I believe in the House will write the next five-year farm bill in 2012, next year but everything's on the table. We have to justify every nickel. But I would make this point. If in a time when we're concerned about food prices, the, how high they are, if we're concerned about the availability of ag products for uh, renewable fuel sources, in any, in any business, do you reduce your investment to increase output? My friends who believe food prices are too high now, if they succeed on the floor of the house in dramatically reducing the investment in production agriculture, ultimately down the road, that will lead to higher prices, not less prices, and that will put more of a strain on every consumer's pocket. So we've got some basic economics to work through in the United States House of Representatives over the next year and a half. 